Okay, perfect. So um, first, I'll, I'm going to ask a, a question to you. Who learned to code, to program uh, before the age of 14 here? Okay. Uh, would, okay. Would, who did it uh, at school? Before the age of 14 at school? Yeah, okay, great. And uh, who has kids or nephews or niece or sisters uh, um, under the age of 18 or 16 or young sisters, kids? Okay. A few parents? Okay. Sisters, nephew. Anyway, uh, uh, myself, I, I have two daughters, uh, three years old and seven years old, and uh, um, that's why we did what we did for, for the kids, always for the kids. So when, we were, when, when I was younger, I learned how to code in BASIC and then Pascal, starting with that, and uh, I, have my, I still have my uh, uh, computer BASIC games uh, in French uh, here, so it's pretty cool. There is a lot of lines of code. And um, as parents, uh, with friends uh, of mine, uh, like uh, Jonathan, who is a professional developer, uh, we wanted to, I'm not sure if it's going to work. OK, old school. OK. We wanted to, to find a way to recapture, to actualize the way we learn programming, the way we t it was a fun activity for us uh, w uh, when we were kids, with our own kids. So we talked a lot about uh, how to do it, the best way to do it. And we found that it's hard at home uh, to, to, have, uh, to share uh, coding, to share programming with our kids, because there is a lot of activities. Uh, you go to the park, you have friends, you go to the movies, uh, you go to the museum, and there is not a lot of time or opportunities to, to, to make it happen at home, to share our interest in code and, uh, and in computers with our kids at home. So at some point, um, Jonathan discovered that the common line was very interesting for, 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 uh, for his daughter, that even a kid now can, can see the magic in the common line, uh, talking to the computer, having, uh, having an answer. So we thought about the way we learn as kids, uh, experimenting, exploring, with no tutorials per se, with no, uh, no directions. And uh, um, so Jonathan, uh, after months and months of, uh, of discussion, said, okay, I'm going to invite you all with your kids to a kids' party. Goûter in French is a, a kids' party with, uh, with when kids eat cakes and candy. You say, uh, goûter d'anniversaire for a birthday party, for example. So let's eat cakes, let's eat candy with our kids, and let's program and code at the same time. So that was the first coding goûter. So computers, cakes, code and cakes, and kids, and parents, and adults. And so it was in December 2011, and since then we have done um, 10 or 11 or 12 coding goûter. And for the first time this January, uh, we had three coding goûter at the same time, the same weekend, in three different cities in Paris, outside of Paris, in saint gratien and in Lyon. So we had a lot of people asking us to set up new coding goûter, and we just... We are totally uh, no money and non-commercial, and we just try to to have uh, to to make room for more people and uh, to have more events to to allow more kids to to share our interest in code with them. So I'm going to show you a few pictures of what a, uh, what a coding goûter looks like. So it looks like that with cakes and. Uh, Okay. So as you see, there is a, a, a wide range of uh, age, from 5 to 14. And the parents uh, are at the, at the coding goûter with their kids. So it's a, a parent or adult, because sometimes it's not the parents, but uh, other adults. It's an it's a adult kids shared activity. We use a lot of tools. We are not uh, uh, only uh, focused on, for example, Scratch uh, or uh, uh, specific tools. We try tools. Uh, we even tried uh, Xcode on Mac uh, and other kind of 
more professional tools for some kids that are, are more advanced. And we play with game salad, with context free art, uh, with code on iPad. We also had a, a, a two, two or three times a, a Lego Mindstorm programmation with something called enchanting. This is Robozel. Robozel is great for learning uh, recursion and loops and uh, function calls. It's, uh, it's not a programming tool per se, but it's, it's, uh, it's very nice. This is uh, one of my favorites. Uh, you can't see a thing, but it's Live Code Lab. It's a browser-based mini programming environment for WebGL uh, geometry. So you can just type a few commands and have, uh, so kids love that, have balls and uh, things rotating and uh, solar systems and things like that. And we, we, we have demos. We have what we call spectacle en français. It means shows. So we let the kid demos uh, what they have done. So it's quite long. A coding goûter is like three hours and a half. Uh, because we want to take our time, it's really a family, um, family experience or a kids and adult experience, family time. So we want to, to, to create the time to, it's not like a traditional workshop, which is like one hour or something like that. Another spectacle, and kids go crazy on, on things, eh? like, like, as you can see, colors, and uh, this is probably uh, some interactive animation, I, I don't remember exactly, but, and they try different things. This is, I think it's, this is Codea uh, on iPad, it's an, an environment to, uh, a Lua environment to play and build the app directly on the iPad. So, where am I? Oh, it's okay. So there is a, as you can maybe see, there is a couple of things we do differently for us, from others, uh, code education uh, groups or workshops. Um, first, it's an activity for the kids and the adult to share. So it is not like you drop your kids, uh, they learn something on the computer, and then you don't. Yeah, no, we want, and for us and for the uh, other people that come to Connecticut, we want to share uh, that with our kids, and we want to code and program with our kids. So some of the some of, some of the parents uh, at Coding Goûter are um, professional developers. Uh, some of them don't know a thing about programming. Um, uh, even there is some, some of them even have kids that know a lot more than them uh, uh, about computers and programming. But the idea is that everybody learn together. And so it's not a, it's not a class. There is no lesson plan, no curriculum. We don't want to build a curriculum uh, like some others do. And because we, we think there is a space, there is a need for unschooled uh, not school-based in terms of, uh, of, um, of methodology, uh, activities uh, around code education, around kids coding. There is a lot of thing, there are a lot of talk now about putting um, computer programming uh, in schools and having curriculums, but we want to do it another way. We want to do it freely. Uh, we want to explore with our kids. So there is no lesson, no teacher. And as you can see, this is, this is my brother and my nephew, Leo. And this is Emma, uh, Jonathan's uh, daughter, Jonathan's daughter. And she, my, my, my brother can, can know a little bit of PHP. Uh, he did a, he did a li little bit at, at school, at universities. But Emma is teaching him Scratch because she knows a lot more about Scratch than him. So we want to keep that. We want to, to have the, the knowledge flowing in every direction, there, is, there, there are kids that can teach an adult, other kids, etc., etc. Another thing that we found to be very effective and very interesting for us, and that we want to keep because as adults, we want to share that with, with the kids, is we want to put the creative direction in the hands of the kids. Because you know, most of the time when adults build a workshop for, for uh, around uh, programming, typically it's go like that. Okay, let's have eight to 10 years old kids 
build a shoot and up, a shooter with a, I don't know, space capsule shooting aliens uh, in scratch. And what we found is that, guess what? Most of the kids don't really want to build a shooter game with a, some ones, there is a, but not all of them. So if you set up the creative direction for them, first of all, you exclude some of the kids, and, and then you, you miss something, you miss, because we found that uh, kids want to do crazy things with, uh, with multimedia programming tools like Scratch, they want to, to do animation, to do movies, and if you say, okay, let's do, today we are going to do a, a game, you miss something. So we want really to put the creative direction uh, in the hand of kids, because kids are creative, and they have crazy ideas, so that's something we do. Also, as it's a coding good is not a class, uh, there is no point, no badges, no scores, and we have shows. Essentially, there are demos, and as you all know, demos are a great way to to be rewarded for what you have done. And we think demos and shows are a much more uh, interest, uh, intrinsic. It's much more, much more rewarding, but by itself, than having external points and internal score or badges like scouts and things like that. So that's about uh, what Koning Gute is about. Um, it's probably not very clear because it's the first time I, I talk about it in English, so maybe my, my, I thought not, not everything is clear, but we have a lot of, little bit of time, and you can talk with me and with uh, others. What thing I wanted to address is that we, 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 have, we frequently have the question about why do you want kids to learn code? So people ask us, but, but what, why uh, do you want kids to learn code? And I think there is, today there is a very good reason for kids to learn code, and there is a very bad one. So obviously, we don't want, <laughs> we don't want to, we don't set up getting it for the very bad one. So let's start with, with the very bad reason for why uh, kids uh, should be learning code. The very, very bad one is that, that is for creating a computer engineer army, a droves of computer engineers for the big company and for uh, uh, saving the economy. And that's something we, we hear a lot. And I think in the next years, we are going to hear that a lot, that we need to create a computer engineering drove to save the economy. And obviously, it's a very shallow view. Uh, it's a very bad reason. But there is a very good reason, and I think that's why you are here today, is that coding, programming, uh, kids want to do it. They see around them that there is code everywhere. Uh, they want to try it. They want to explore it. They want to, to create things with it. And coding, programming is a, is a great way for them to express themselves. It brings people together, just like we see today here. Uh, it brings people together from all around the world, and it's a great way to be human today. And that's why I want to share that with our kids and with other kids, because it's a great thing to do. That's a good reason. So maybe in the next uh, few months or year, when you hear about uh, a school programs and government setting up uh, a co a coding or programming, uh, programming school or uh, outside of school, think about the good and the bad reason. You want kids and the future people, uh, the, the future, or future, you want your kids and kids uh, from other kids to learn code in a good way, creatively, uh, by expressing themselves, by exploring, not by being taught uh, for, I don't know, the economy, the big companies, or things like that. So it's not ringing yet, so if you have any question, it's going to ring in uh, one minute. Any question? Yeah, my question is, uh, I thought on the website uh, that you recommend that there should be at least one professional programmer present when you do something like that. Uh, do you think it's possible if it, even without one, just if you have a basic understanding of programming? Well, 
What we found is that it's nice to have something very, very um, fluent in terms of programming. So for example, Jonat, I, I'm not a, de a professional d developer. I think I, st I, stopped, I stopped coding entire uh, full contained program at 13. But uh, Jonathan and Raphael and others and it's, uh, uh, help a lot because they know, you know algorithm and they can point directions. So it's, it's, a it's nice to have uh, something very fluent in terms of uh, 